everyone sees on the screen. <laughs> yes, so the title was obtained by copy-pasting from the title of the conference and adding gauge theory. So uh, let me start by reminding uh, what everybody already knows. Uh, so I will just, instead of giving the general theory, I will give a kind of elementary overview of, of a few examples uh, of, um, of the topics mentioned in the title. So let me start by reviewing the, uh, the story of uh, isomorphic deformations over uh, of of meromorphic connections uh, over Gini zero curves. So this is the uh, century old uh, mathematical uh, problem. Uh, it has uh, famous names which I forgot to, to write attached to it, like Riemann Hilbert problem. Uh, so so we studied the the study we studied the gauge field uh, on 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 a sphere with punctures uh, which we uh, look at in the gauge where the uh, the the zero one component of the gauge field is set to zero so you can view it as a kind of a complex gauge and uh, the gauge field is flat, except uh, except that it has singularities at the punctures. So the curvature actually is a sum of delta functions uh, with coefficients uh, of delta functions uh, belonging to to the orbits uh, adjoint orbits of uh, of the gauge group. And so this the space of uh, of such meromorphic connections can be parameterized by basically fixing the residues. Uh, which I denote by AI, uh, and so they, they belong to, uh, to to respective uh, orbits, which I denote by OI, and the whole space, the module space of gauge equivalence classes of such connections is actually a symplectic manifold, which is very elementary, is a, is a symplectic quotient of the product of the of these orbits, uh, meaning that the sum of these residues is equal to zero, so that's the moment map equation, and we identify the, uh, the set of residues uh, uh, up to the overall uh, similarity transformation uh, from the group. And so the isomorphic information is the problem of uh, the question of how we deform these residues once we move the points. So we move the points around and we want to, uh, we want to uh, preserve the gauge equivalence class of, of the connection number. So it turns out that the corresponding modifications of the residues are generated by Hamiltonian flows with Hamiltonians given by the strange looking formula, strange for the gauge field, field theorists. Uh, namely, you take the, the one form, the connection one form, you take a square trace. So this is uh, or a killing form for the general algebra. And you take the residue of the corresponding, of, you know, corresponding to two differential uh, or take a counterintegral around around the, the punctures and that so, so that gives you the well-known uh, quadratic uh, Hamiltonians which obey uh, two sets of equations so they pass on commute with respect to the natural symplectic form so here I, I, I made a few jumps so Nikita just one remark yeah. Am I correct that this Hamiltonian interpretation is not that all as Schlesinger is Jim Bamiva, much more fresh? Uh, you quite possible, so let me write that. Uh, so Schlesinger probably wrote the equations, <laughs> but. The fact that yes, he wrote the equation, be... but the Hamiltonian nature is okay. not autonomous system. is much later. Okay, good. So uh, now, if if you just look at these Hamiltonians, you you cannot not notice that they actually coincide with the Hamiltonians of uh, the Gaudin integrable system, which looks almost identical, so the same phase space. Uh, again, the, the symplectic quotient of the, of the product of the orbits uh, by the action of the group. 
but now the object which we associate to the point on this on this space is a meromorphic uh, one form as opposed to the uh, connection and uh, so there we can write the same formula so take trace phi squared take the residues around the the, the punctures and uh, so use the fact that they these will be commuting Hamiltonians but uh, in, in the second approach, we actually freeze the positions of the points, zi. So, so we just uh, generate some flows on the space of residues, but we don't change the, the positions of the of the punctures. And in the second approach, it is natural to study higher Hamiltonians, which would be given by multiple by the residues of uh, or, or coefficients of expansions of higher Casimirs built out of of this meromorphic connection or one form. And so in the second case, in the, on the integral side case, it is kind of clear what the Hamiltonians do. Uh, I'll, I'll get to that. On, on the Schlesinger side, it is less clear because if you look at what happens to the, uh, to the meromorphic connection, when you start you know, flowing along the higher Casimirs, well, in the first, Approximation: uh, the the simple poles uh, become cuts, and uh, and this and the second order of perturbation theory gives you something complicated. So uh, I will get back to this to this question later. Uh, so the gauge theory perspective tells us that it is natural to consider these high flows, but uh, we still don't know what what they what they generate really. Now, as I mentioned here, so we can uh, change the, at the first glance, we, we, we do an innocent change. We just, we forget about the d by dz in front of the, uh, uh, in front of the meromorphic one form. And- uh, Nikita, one, one yes. again, excuse for interruption. <laughs> it was called Garnier system at the time of Schleser. Yes. So this is genus, uh, so the, which one was Garnier? I thought Garnier was also Gar Gar Garnier when the punctures are fixed okay. and you can see the other spectral flows. It was Garnier system. Okay, okay. So- um, excuse, excuse me, please. Uh, well, one, one more remark. Uh, so, so if you have <laughs> integral, so it's actually not a number, but a kind of cotangent factor or something like that. So it was a Hamiltonian. Again? Sorry, so the Hamiltonians. Uh, so if you, if you if you cotangent factor, so you residue of a quadratic differential is not a number. Absolutely, absolutely. So, but here I'm using the fact that I'm using the, the fixed coordinate z. So this is really should be viewed as so there is some uh, I, I pair this with the uh, with the vector field uh, d by dz, and maybe in, in, in this higher order case will be some some uh, d by k minus one. It's mm -hmm. like so, so, so this okay. is okay. Clear. Mm -hmm. This is this uses the, the fact that the underlying curve actually has a fixed complex structure. Uh, it's uh, it's only the punctures which uh, which change it. So, on in higher, if we try to generalize it to higher genus, uh, it will be a, uh, well. It is known how to do this for for. For the integrable system, so then we will indeed will have uh, for each Beltrami differential or for, for each higher Beltrami differential, we'll have a Hamiltonian. Uh, but for the Eisenhower case, uh, well, you can look at actually at, at the paper by Krischer, uh, who uses Turing parameterizations to, to discuss the Eisenhower deformation in, um, in higher genus. And it, I mean, there was a parallel work, uh, the one which, which I know. Which, which I will mention later because it's uh, in line with what I'm going to say. Uh, so what you said, well, it will, will be much more relevant in high, in high genus, but I will not talk about, the, the, I will not say much about the high genus case. Um, all right, so, so, so in this case, uh, in the integral case, so Gaden is really one, what you get when you quantize it. Like the, the physicist learned about the quantum system first, and then, um, so I always forget Garnier, uh, which uh, 
Also, I think Garnier is also uh, that system in a specific order system. So there are various ways of, of uh, uh, parameterizing this phase space. And uh, depending on which coordinates you choose, you'll get uh, the, sa the same integrable system will, will, will have different uh, incarnations. And um, so I think Garnier is the one which corresponds to the uh, next slide. So uh, for, for the group SL2, we can parameterize uh, this phase space, so the space of residues mod uh, being the, the condition that they sum up to zero up to the overall conjugation in several ways. And one way which is less known, I would say, is uh, when you interpret, so we, let's interpret the residues as points on the, in the three-dimensional uh, vector space. It's a complex vector space, but I will, uh, so let to visualize it, let's, let's think of, of a real space. Uh, fixed, fixing the orbit means that we, the norm of the vector is, is fixed. And uh, saying that the sum of radius is equal to zero means that you can form a closed polygon in the three-dimensional space out of, the, of these vectors. So I, I, drew it, I drew it here in the, in the uh, purple. Now, so this is a polygon whose sides uh, are fixed length, but the otherwise geometry of that polygon is arbitrary. And we view it up to the uh, isometries of the three-dimensional uh, Euclidean space. So up to translations and rotations. Uh, so the rotations in particular would, would be the gaseous formations. So the, the adjoint action of the SL2 on, on its Lie algebra represents the complexification of rotations of the Euclidean three space. And uh, so the degrees of freedom of, of this uh, geometric uh, object are essentially the lengths of the diagonals on which you can divide your, uh, by which you can divide this polygon into triangles. So these I call them LIs and the angles between the neighboring triangles. And uh, so it's a, it's a coordinate system, namely each way of partitioning the, my, my, my uh, polygon into triangles by diagonals gives you a coordinate chart. So as uh, Rosley taught me, this, these are the coordinates which, which, which Klitschko found. And so if you express this uh, Garnier uh, uh, Hamiltonians in, in those coordinates, what you will get will look like a, a rational relativistic integral system. So if you view the lengths of the diagonals as coordinates and thetas, the angles as momenta, then these Hamiltonians will be trigonometric functions of momenta, obviously, and so they will be, we can compare them to touristic integrable systems. Uh, the flows which they generate, so if, if, if you choose, if you view the diagonals as Hamiltonians, uh, which are not the Garnier Hamiltonians, th those will be the so-called bending flows where, where you uh, keep the relative geometry of, of two halves of the polygon on which the given diagonal it's, uh, is, it divides it, and you just change the angle. So it's bending flow in that sense. But the flows which are generated by, by Garnier Hamiltonians are uh, much more complicated. Uh, on the other hand, if you take the limit in which the room surface degenerates, so the sphere, let's say with four punctures, de degenerates into let's say two spheres with uh, two punctures each, uh, then uh, Garnier flows will actually degenerate to the bending flows. And so the one way to understand this critical coordinates is really the uh, action angle variables for, the, uh, uh, for Garnier in the, in the limit when uh, uh, the Riemann surface degenerates. Riemann surface is a sphere with n punctures. So we go to the points in M0 and bar, which correspond to the maximal degenerations. And those points are in one-to-one -one correspondence with trivalent graphs, with n uh, trivalent trees with uh, n, n um, tails, and they, they're in one-to-one -one correspondence with the choices of the, the diagonals uh, for the polygon. Now, another uh, system, a coordinate system, and that's where you get Garnier. Oh, by the way, I wrote Garnier. <laughs> Right. So this is where. So I thought I thought it's um, 
uh, it was for the as another well information flows, but it, it, it's the same flow uh, locally. Uh, so, so in other coordinate system, uh, physicists would call them separate variables. Uh, if you choose a gauge when uh, the residue at one of the points is diagonal, so that leaves the uh, C star remaining gauge, gauge freedom, and uh, then you look at the in this gauge you look at the let's say upper tri upper uh, uh, right corner of the uh, of the connection form uh, viewed as matrix, and yeah so then the zeros of that uh, upper right corner would give you the the coordinates and the um, the eigenvalues of the of the uh, of, the, of this one form at, the, at this zeros will give you the, the uh, conjugate momentum. And so if the Hamiltonians expressed in these variables will be polynomial in momentum, so they will, uh, in particular, will, will, will give, give the uh, Penleve Hamiltonian for the four point case. Now, these well known stories uh, are actually two opposite quasi classical limits of, uh, of the system. Which I will call KZ BPZ system. Namely, uh, so it's a system of Pinesian homological equations in genus zero. Uh, and in some cases, it can be um, also mapped to the system of Bilal and Polykov homological equations, uh, which is related to the separated variables, um, which I just mentioned. So uh, in the classical, not in the mathematical sense, but in the historical sense, classical uh, formulation. Uh, so the, 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 these equations are written on the on the function of of the positions of these points z1, zn, taking values in a tensor product of of uh, some representations of the Lie algebra. Uh, in fact, it, so it, it it leaves an invariant sub, sub, subspace in the tensor product of these representations. And in the context of two-dimensional conformal field theory, where these equations were first written by Knizhny and Malachikov, uh, the coefficient, so this coefficient in front of the, of the derivative actually has to be an integer. In fact, k, the, the parameter k should be non-negative. And the representations we want the n uh, should correspond to integrable uh, level k representations of the associated current algebra, uh, but, um, and, and so and the solutions of these equations are related to the uh, three-dimensional topological field theory, chan Simon's theory, let's say at level K. And in fact, the, uh, so there is some association of the solutions of this equation or local solutions of this equation to the uh, states in Chen Simon's theory with the Wilson graph. So the state, uh, so the, the theory, the space of states is associated to the sphere with n punctures, and the states would correspond to the uh, three dimensional uh, ball whose boundary is a sphere with the graph, general trivalent graph embedded into, inside the ball such that it, on the boundary it, it ends on, on, on this puncture. So in Chen Simon's theory, you can associate to the graph if you color the edges of the graph by representations of the gauge group and the vertices uh, within intertwiners. So there is an observable, which is a generalization of the Wilson line. And uh, so the expectation value of that observable as a function of the boundary conditions will give you a state in the, in the, um, in the space of states and that state will be identified with Psi. So uh, in this approach, the, the, the equation, which I wrote, the homological equation is interpreted um, as the um, identification of, of the state in the Hilbert space uh, defined in different varying polarizations. So if you, might, if you think about something like geometric modulization of the modular space of flat connections, on a sphere with punctures with fixed conjugacy classes of, of colonomies around the punctures. So that's simplex manifold. And you can assign it to the complex structure depending on, on the positions of the punctures. Uh, 
and so the the quantization will uh, produce the space of holomorphic sections of some line bundle of, of over that of that symplectic manifold, and so identifying the states for different choices of complex structure is achieved by the condition knowledge of connection. So I note in passing that the, the choice of this Wilson graph it's not unique. So you can make uh, let's see if I can do it in real time. So instead of, uh, let's say, instead of uh, this graph, I could have uh, drawn something like that. It's, it's also perfectly well-defined observable in Chen Simon's theory. Um, so you, of course you will have a different labeling of, of, the, of the internal edges. And so these different choices correspond to different choices of diagonals and different choices of coordinate systems on my um, modular space. Now, the integrable system, the one which I talked about, in fact, it's quantum, quantum analog, the Godin system arises in the limit when the coefficient in front of the Z derivative goes to zero. So this is where you freeze the positions of the functions. And it's, this limit is outside the domain of allowed values of level for the, well, for the uh, CFT, two-dimensional CFT. And also Chen Simon's theory is believed to do something crazy in, in, this, in this limit. So it's not achievable from the conventional uh, you know, standpoint. The isomnodromic deformation problem uh, is recovered in the limit k goes to infinity. So that's that's okay. And that has been studied um, both on KZ and VPZ side. But so we would like to be able to, uh, to, to, to relax the condition that k is an integer, that the representations are, the representations attached to the points associated with say fine dimensional representations of the real algebra, and uh, so the highest weights belong to the vial Alkov. So we like to get rid of all these constraints. We'd like to be able to make the level complex, the spins or the weights of the representations to be complex. And so in this case, uh, naively, the Chen Simon's theory does not make sense. So this, this Lagrangian is not gauge invariant when K is not an integer. And also the Wilson graph is not defined because uh, you need uh, the representations which, uh, so the representations which were assigned to the edges uh, this is some intermediate presentation. So these representations are not, they don't integrate to the president. Am I the only one having problem with this uh, audio? Yeah, I also no. don't hear anything. I hear you or oh, you, but not the speaker. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes, well. Okay. He disappeared. Oh, no. Uh -huh. Yes, yes, it disappeared. Uh, I, I need to tell him that he disappeared because uh, otherwise, uh, I mean, wait for, for kind of a minute when I zoom out of the something is wrong. 
I wonder if he keeps speaking. I'm trying now to yeah. understand it. Yes. И, Игорь, а ты можешь позвонить ему по обычному телефону? Потому что на WhatsApp он не отвечает. У него всюду автоответчик стоит, не могу достать. Нет, ну, ну а этот самый WhatsApp он, наверное, просто выключил. Okay. Maybe while we have a technical break, break, someone can give any comments or ask any questions. I may ask a question. Actually, I thought that the good limit for the other spectral deformation when k is not going to infinity, but rather to zero. K plus H goes to zero. So the coefficient in front of DZ should vanish. Uh, K plus H goes to zero. Yeah, but he said that it's integrable limit. And but the problem is that in such limit uh, uh, something is wrong with representation staying in the points. No, I don't think so. No, of course, such limit exists, and then this is probably this uh, goddamn limit exactly. Okay, sorry. I, uh, for how long I was I was absent? I I, I just realized that <laughs> my connection uh, was broken. Well, it, it, uh, so uh, you just said uh, okay. Now it disappeared, but you, you can put it back. Yes. And uh, you said something. Uh, you started to explain what what was wrong with the Wilson graph. For oh my god, 
Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, uh, you okay. can uh, for uh, I mean for some safeness, you can switch on your phone because I I well several of us tried to reach you. And, ah uh, yes, I tried to yes I, I turn it off because uh, I didn't want to. Okay, so let me turn 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 it on. So, so if, if it happens I, again, just WhatsApp me. Okay. Yeah. Neither me nor either got any success in calling you. <laughs> No, because I turned it off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that's typical. Yeah. Okay, so let's continue. <laughs> All right. So, oh my God. Okay. So, so I was saying that that Wilson graph does not make sense if the uh, representation which you color the edges does not correspond to the representation of the group, because usually you you write something like the matrix ele matrix elements. Uh, Of the um, of the holonomy of the gauge field along the edge, and the holonomy is it's a group element, so so you, you need to be able to integrate the Lie algebra to the group in this representation. And uh, but if I'm making my spins complex, then they do not correspond to the to the representations of the group. They only um, so only the Lie algebra X in this on, uh, X there. So it's not possible to define this uh, observable in, in, in three-dimensional theory. But, uh, okay, so let me speed up, speed up a little bit. There is nevertheless a four-dimensional theory, which uh, allows to study the analytically continued conformal blocks and study the duality, which basically inverts the level and makes it also allows to make it complex, allows to take a limit when it goes to a critical value and so on and so forth. So there are several realizations, several ways of, 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 of getting to those theories. And uh, um, there is some manifold. So the manifold of n equals two theories uh, So as I as I said in, in vacuum, I we don't know what this manifold is and and what is the I mean, what is that manifold of really? But we have some coordinate charts, so to speak. So we have patches of this variety M, which we can identify with different ways of getting uh, getting the, uh, the 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 theories. So one char chart, one patch comes from the local club R three folds. They are local in order to describe supersymmetric theories as opposed to theories with supergravity. So these theories which live on, it makes sense to any, any of the structures which, I, which I'm listing here, leaves um, can be you know, placed on a fixed four dimensional, just Minkowski space or um, in fact, so, so it's a super Minkowski space. Uh, so one patch is local Columbia three folds, another patch, is a uh, six dimensional two comma zero theory compactified on the uh, remote surface of zero area, uh, possibly with punctures. So it's a complex curve, but uh, so it has a conformal structure, but it doesn't have a uh, metric structure. And the, the third and more conventional way is to uh, fix, fix a group and its representation R and write Lagrangian, just by Usual rules. So, with the we have a new term with the connector for the metric fields and so on and so forth. And there's a proper subset of of that, that class of theories which correspond to quiver theories, for which the gauge group is a product of unitary groups, and their representations is the sum of bifundamental representations. So they they are assigned to the edges of this graph. Um, not all quiver theories. Uh, have unitary gauge groups. There is another interesting class of theories where you have alternating orthogonal and symplectic groups, uh, and the, the so the edges would naturally be symplectic spaces. But I have little to say about those. As as my picture suggests, there is some overlap of uh, of both pairwise and and triple. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll mention some of these uh, dualities which which relate these pictures. Okay, so 
something can be computed about these theories and th those computations is, is what provides the basis for the for the claim which I made earlier that uh, that's the way to complex complexify the analytically continue control blocks of two-dimensional CFT so um, we can one can discuss and compute many things but uh, the maybe the simplest object to define and to study uh, is the partition function which let's say for the toric Calabi or threefold would be a sum over a collection of plane partitions associated to the vertices of the toric diagram and ordinary partitions associated to the edges of the toric diagram with certain fugacities both for the edges and uh, for the size of partitions uh, at the edges and, and the vertices and some complicated rational functions of, 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 uh, of an additional parameter epsilon and the shapes of the uh, young diagrams and plane partitions. So, uh, so once you dress up this uh, skeleton, which is the toric diagram with plane partitions assigned to the vertices and ordinary partition assigned to the edges, you'll get something, some kind of fattening of the, of this, uh, of this tropical curve, which is a skeleton. And that will show you that there is some curve emerging. And, and so that's the first hint of an integral system, which we'll talk about later. Um, on the quiver gauge theory side, so you compute the partition function of the slightly deformed four-dimensional uh, gauge theory. So it's a sum over instantons in, uh, living on the four-dimensional space-time. And so that will be the sum over the collections of ordinary partitions. Uh, they, they, they assign to the vertices of the quiver diagram. The vertices in turn should be uh, colored by the uh, positive non-negative integers which are the ranks of the gauge groups. So this is the uh, promised group, which is a product of green tree groups. And so for each vertex of the quiver diagram, we have a collection of young diagrams in the amount of the rank and I um, in the amount of the number of, uh, yes, actually it's rank plus one. And so we, we have some partitioned sum over all these collections of young diagrams of something explicit, but not, not that simple. So it's some rational functions of various um, complex uh, parameters. So these parameters uh, have both geometric and, and uh, enumerative uh, meanings. So the picture one, which one should keep, keep in mind is that uh, we live in 10 dimensions, which is uh, essentially the product of this Calabi-Yau threefold, many of the X, and the four-dimensional uh, Euclidean space, uh, R4, it was Minkowski, but now it I will switch to Euclidean. And we have um, various symmetries uh, for which we introduce equivalent parameters, which become the, the arguments of these partition functions. So for the R4, we have two rotations, uh, two orthogonal rotations and two orthogonal planes. And so that they, they correspond to the parameters epsilon one, epsilon two in the Lie algebra of the maximal torus of the rotation group. And that my toric threefold has a, well, it has a three dimensional torus of uh, isometries of which uh, one dimensional torus plays a special role. It's the torus which scales the, the symplectic, uh, the holomorphic top form of the calabi -Yau. So the rotation, so, so the equivalent parameter for that for that torus is related to the uh, parameters of the rotation of four-dimensional space-time in, in such a way that if you view the product of X cross R4 as a, as a Calabia five-fold, then the rotational symmetry preserves the Calabia five structure. So the, four, the five form on the product is, is invariant. Now, uh, something which looks uh, geometric or equivalent for R4, so the other combination of the parameters epsilon one, epsilon two, translates to something non-geometric, but rather topological uh, 
on, on X. So this counting of uh, plane partitions and, and, and partitions assigned to the um, vertices and edges of toric diagram, actually by Donaldson Thomas Gromovitan correspondence uh, maps to the count of the holomorphic curves on X and the fugacity for the uh, sizes of the plane partitions. So something which grows out of the vertices turns out to be related to the to the parameter which counts the genus of, of, of this curve. So in other words, the string coupling constant. And so magically that, that parameter is uh, something like the difference of epsilon one, epsilon two. Uh, there are other, other rotational symmetries of Calabi Yao, namely the torus, the Calabi Yao torus, the one which actually preserves this, the, the, the omega x. So that torus is defined canonically. The, the other torus actually was not defined canonically. Um, so that torus plays a role in the localization computations, but it is not visible in the four dimensional partition function. Now to get back to the problem of isomorphic deformation and its quantization given by the KZ system, one, introduce further observables when there's certain observables in the four-dimensional gauge theory, the so-called surface defects. So they, uh, they essentially two-dimensional Siegel models, supersymmetric Siegel models on whose target space, whose target spaces have symmetry, uh, which is the group, which is the gauge symmetry of the four-dimensional theory we started with. And so we can couple this two-dimensional sigma model to the four-dimensional gauge fields. And that's effectively creates a singularity for the curvature of the dynamical gauge field. Which is supported on the surface of the surface defect. So, um, so, so the, the residue of the singularity, so the, the coefficient of the delta function can vary uh, along the, the surface. And so that's the, the sigma model field. So the, that's what you, this is what the sigma model is um, caring about. Um, now the gauge theory we started with, so it has some parameters, the, the Lagrangian of the theory has parameters which are the parameters of uh, the gauge cup, the gauge coupling, which I denote by tau, the masses for the metric fields, uh, which I denote by m, and the parameters of omega of the this equivariant rotation parameters epsilon one, epsilon two. Now, given the Lagrangian, your theory may have different vacuum, vacuum, vacua, and so the choice of a vacuum is is parameterized by the by the other set of parameters, which I call the Coulomb moduli, which is denoted by a. And they can be also related to the vacuum expectation values of some local operators. Now the surface effect is, uh, it's not, it's a non-local operator. So it's an extended operator, so to speak. It occupies two dimensional subspace or four dimensional space time. And make, it has its own parameters. So since it's a single model, uh, the single models have parameters which uh, correspond to the topology of the, so they, they, they correspond to the topology of the target space. And so our target spaces typically will be some homogeneous spaces or some bundles of homogeneous spaces for the group G. And so they, they have rich uh, second uh, homology. And so to, to capture the, the second homology, we introduce uh, theta angles, theta angles and make complexifications. And so I will denote the corresponding parameters collectively by some letters Q. So the partition function, the expectation value of this non-local observable surface defect, which I will denote by psi. Uh, so this is so this is the expectation value of the surface defect in the vacuum, which is characterized by the expectation values of local operators in gauge theory. And so collectively, this guy depends now on on on, on many 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 parameters. 
Qs, As, M, Tau, Epsilon, Epsilon 2. So in the fully covariant situation, uh, we would like the surface defect to respect the symmetries. So we can place it along the, the plane, which is fixed by the rotations we're using to covariantly deform the, the four dimensional theory. And um, so if I have a single surface defect, my nomenclature is to, to denote by epsilon two, the parameter corresponding to the transverse rotations and epsilon one are the rotations along the surface of the surface defect. So the local apparatus, which in the conventional Poincare invariant four dimensional theory can be placed anywhere in, in, in our, on R4, once I turn on omega deformation, the equivariant deformation, uh, they break supersymmetry unless they're placed at the fixed point of the, of the rotations. And so the surface effect is placed at the fixed plane and local operators are placed at the fixed uh, point. Now, if I take the limit when epsilon two goes to zero, it's a partly equivalent situation where now I have restored the Poincaré invariance and super Poincaré invariance in, in two dimensions. So my local operators are now suddenly allowed to move and also the surface defect is allowed to move in, in this transfer direction. They still cannot move in the, along the surface defect because there I have, a, I have this rotation symmetry acting. But the fact that I can move this local apparatus and supersymmetry and topological invariance, which, which is implied by supersymmetry, immediately imply that you have the identity that the surface defect with the local operator on top of it is equivalent up to the chromologically trivial terms to the surface defect with the local operator removed from the surface defect. And since it can be moved infinitely far away, uh, the cluster decomposition will tell you that the expectation values will factorize. And so you get for free, essentially for free, kind of operator relation that says that the action of the local operator on the surface defect gives you a number times the surface defect. So it's, so the surface defect in this limit is the eigen uh, vector of the, of the set of, of all local operators. And so that's, quant that's the origin of quantum integrability. Of course, what's non-trivial is to express the left-hand side as some operator in the, um, in the parameters. And uh, so in, in some cases that, that, that was achieved. And in the fully equivalent situation, the, uh, the equation which the surface defect expectation value uh, obeys has been shown to be of this suggestive form. So, the product of equivariant parameters epsilon one epsilon two multiplies the derivative with respect to the uh, gauge couplings complexified gauge couplings and the right hand side so this is the actually this is the expression for the uh, surface defect together with the local operator sitting on top of it this is essentially a differential operator in the uh, couplings uh, on, on, on the surface defect acting on the surface defect. So the best cases where this, best understood cases where this was done explicitly and proven rigorously are the cases of the gauge group uh, of the theory with the gauge group SUM. And we have two such classes. So, I mean, it's a class because you can get from, from, from these theories, you can get to the uh, other theories by taking various limits. So one class is uh, correspond to the quiver of type A1 and another corresponds to the quiver of type A0 hat. So the first one is the so, it's a so-called uh, super QCD theory. It's the theory with two N fundamental hypermultiplets, so like two N quarks, with gray group SUN. And in this case, the equation which I wrote uh, has been identified uh, by uh, Sasha Tsimbaluk and myself with a kinetic homologic equation written on a, on a sphere with four punctures for the uh, SLN current algebra of level K such that K over 
k plus n is epsilon two over epsilon one. Uh, for the infinite dimensional representations attached to the punctures, and the representations are of the following interesting type. So we have two Verma modules, one of the sorry uh, of the high of the lowest weight and one of the highest weight. These weights are determined by the masses of my uh, quarks. And so I have two n quarks. I split them into two two sets of n quarks each. And so one defines the lowest weight of the Verma module and of the lowest weight module, and that defines the highest weight of the highest weight module. Uh, actually, so the, to define to the, to the, the lowest the, the weights of the Verma modules are n minus one parameters. So these are the masses uh, with with the which are shifted by the center of mass of masses. And the remaining two parameters are the parameters which uh, enter the definition of the modules which sit at the punctures Q and one. And these are, uh, they look like principal series representations. So they are neither lowest weight nor highest weight. They can be realized essentially in will run polynomials of degree zero in N variables with a certain uh, shift of the uh, reference uh, weight. And so this is where the Coulomb moduli enter. But the point is that these are infinite dimensional representations and the space of invariance uh, of, the ten of the completely tensor product of, this represent of these modules is essentially functions of n minus one variables, which are the parameters of my uh, surface effect. So these parameters can be identified with some coordinates, again, coordinates on the modular space of uh, um, his bundles on the sphere with four punctures with the residues of uh, generic type at zero infinity and of so-called minimal type at, at Q and one. So in the limit epsilon one to zero, so this is the limit when the uh, equivariant parameter along the surface defect is set to zero, one recovers the isomonodromic deformation problem of the metamorphic connection on the sphere again with pop punctures with the eigenvalues at two punctures of generic type Whose mass, so they are determined again by the masses and the eigenvalues at the two other punctures of the, so the residues at the two other punctures of, of this uh, scalar minus rank one uh, type. Uh, the Coulomb moduli actually play there in, in this as a monodromic deformation setup, they, they parameterize the eigenvalues of the holonomy of this connection along the counter, which separates zero Q from one infinity. And this is the remaining equivalent parameter. Now the associated linear problem, the horizontal section of this metamorphic connection is also recovered from the, uh, from, from the gauge theory considerations. It turns out that uh, there is a setup in which you, study the intersecting surface defects. So one of the type which I described, it's a, I mean, I did not actually describe it properly. It, it carries the single model whose target space is a vector bundle over the complete flag variety. And so that's why you need N minus one parameter to, uh, to capture the uh, pi two of G more T and you add, add on top of that uh, a transverse surface defect, which uh, carries a vector bundle over a projective space. So it's a kind of minimal type uh, surface defect. So that since CP1, CP1 minus one has a one dimensional uh, H2, you only need one parameter to, uh, to enumerate instantons in the two dimensional single model. And so it turns out that uh, so also because of the and the fact that the cohomology of CPN minus one is n-dimensional, uh, you you get 
essentially uh, the, the so the expectation value of this combined system of surface defects maps to a five point control block now with with four representations of the type i described so they see that uh, zero q one infinity and the fifth representation sitting at the point z and that's a fine dimensional representation so this is c to the n and so the the invariant in the stanza product is uh, roughly speaking it's the and that it's a vector valued function of the um, previous invariance and so so it's it solves now two sets of kz equations if you take the limit epsilon one to zero the solution of these equations will have the exponential prefactor with the term the exponential being hamilton jacobi potential for the isomodromic deformation problem and prefactor will be the horizontal section tile so that's uh, that's how you recover the ingredients of the isomodromic deformation from from the cage theory setup in the analogous case of the a0 hat theory which is also known as n equals to two star or the theory with a joint hyper multiplet the associated surface defect it's again the function of n minus one uh, parameters q which i will now promote to n parameters q after the overall conjugation and that solves the equation which is again uh, of familiar type it's a kind of a non-stationary version of the elliptical algebra moser equation with the mass with epsilon one being the Planck constant and mass being the determining the, the gauge cup or the uh, the coupling constant for the this collagen system. Um, of course, this is also the finish etymology of Bernard equation on the torus with one puncture with a special type of vertex operator at this puncture. Uh, we can also map this to the uh, there is also an associated isomonodromic deformation problem for the meromorphic connection, uh, SLN connection on the torus with one puncture. Uh, I should say that this connection is also related to the trigonometric uh, Roisenas system. But even though this problem is of course known and studied uh, again by Krishiver, uh, we don't know the good gauge theory construction which would produce the horizontal section of its quantization so that's that's unfortunately uh, seems to be pretty complicated i mean there is a candidate observable in gauge theory similar observable to what i described earlier but to prove using the methods which i which we used so far that it solves the 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 two point uh, kzb equation so far is has been has been not possible so let me in conclusion who is, who is this candidate okay so this so so this the uh, this intersecting surface defect so this for, for the n equals to two star theory there is a so-called folded brain surface defect so for the for the experts um in the, in the case which I described for the A1 theory, this transverse defect corresponds to so-called Q operator, the Baxter Q operator. And uh, for the N equals to two star theory, this Baxter Q operator is not the right observable. One, one, one replaces it by the infinite sum of uh, various uh, ratios of these Q observables. Uh, it has a more intricate analytic structure. So, so even though it might be the right answer, it's just, we did not prove yet that it's, I mean, I, I don't know how to prove that it's a, it's a, it's a right answer. Um, okay, let me finish on, on, um, on mentioning some uses of gauge theory. So what, why, why is it good to, to have this four dimensional perspective at, at this analytic continuation? So in, in the cases I mentioned, uh, in the A1 case, 
one can understand the separation of variables in, in quantum case and also the kind of a free field representation for the solution of the KZ equation, uh, which is different from the free field representations which were written by physicists uh, in uh, you know late 80s, early 90s, uh, because again, we, we work with general K, general level and general spins. Um, one gets quantization conditions for the quantum integrable systems or also from, from the from the asymptotics of the, of the, Z, of the Z function. So this is in the limit epsilon two to zero. Uh, one gets new types of vertex operators in, in the, well, in this generalized CFT. So you, if instead of the transverse vertex operators, uh, transverse surface operators, you study parallel surface operators, they map to something new on, on the CFT side. So they're so-called hacky operators, which we recently studied in, in the context of analytic geometric angles by uh, Dan. Etchingoff and Frankel. Uh, so they studied for the k equals minus two for SO2, but uh, four dimensional gauge theory allows to extend this for, for general level and also for, for SLM. So these are interesting operators. They commute with, uh, at the critical level, they commute with the dead Hamiltonians and they pr provide alternative. Hamiltonians, which are yes. as it seems that you are writing something, but the screen is frozen. Oh, so yeah. okay, let me reshare. Hmm. Let, me, let me share again. Okay, how about now? Do you see what I'm writing? Uh, the very bottom uh, disappears, but uh, oh, uh, okay, why is it just the very bottom? But uh, okay, let me try to squeeze this a little bit. Now it's actually better, yeah. Now it seems to me that uh -huh. okay, uh -huh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> These things become so realistic, so it's like it actual blackboard where you should not write it too long. Okay, so the other uses are, uh, of course, something which you can do naturally in four dimensions, but you have no idea what it is in, in, in two dimensional context. And that's to, to, to perform, uh, so to replace R4 by some other four manifold. And the simplest one is to do the blow up so you, you just glue a two sphere and that procedure. So by comparing the, the expectation values of, of various operators uh, on the blown up space and the original space, you produce relations between conformal blocks of current algebras and W algebras and also between different levels. And uh, one application, which I believe Alba mentioned earlier today uh, is key formula of the Mayun Yorgraf and Lissoli, which relates the tau function of Penlevé to the C equals one control blocks of the Asorum. Uh, but I would say that the most interesting application is that it raises all kinds of, all sorts of interesting questions, which uh, you would not probably have asked before, you would not have asked before. So one is that uh, I expect that, uh, there is not just a categorification, which is a term introduced by Igor Frankel uh, of the you know, conform blocks, not invariants and so on, but really the five categorification. So there, 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 is a, there is a five category which underlies this whole story uh, because there is this underlying six dimensional theory. So you can study it on a manifold with corners. And so that gives you so co-dimension one will give you a category, the corner co-dimension two will give you two category, 
and so on and so forth. So, so because the morphisms be, would be categories and, and so on and so forth. Uh, another type of questions is that um, most of these four dimensional theories, which, which I described, so at least all the four dimensional theories which of quiver type admit the lift to five and some of them admit the lift to six dimensions. So meaning that the, these partition functions have Q analogs and some, some of them have elliptic analogs. So that suggests that there is some uh, uh, Q deformation of everything I mentioned, isobanodromic problems, uh, integrable systems, and uh, Liouville theory, which, for example, which is related to the SL2 isobanodromic problem, uh, might be related, to, might, might be elevated to something like a fine type, a fine version of uh, Liouville theory, which which is related to this um, cinch uh, Gordon equation in, in two dimensions, which was mentioned in Babenko's talk. And if we leave to six dimensions, then it's, then who knows what we'll get. Uh, the other types of questions uh, is related to what I mentioned in the beginning, namely we have the, so the isomorphism deformation is something which is natural for SL2 where you have the positions of the punctures and they are complex moduli of the underlying curve. Uh, but uh, for high rank gate groups, uh, you have high Casimirs and it, is, it would be natural to associate them to, to W moduli, modular W structure. So uh, I've been asking these questions, uh, this question for, for, for many years. Uh, in particular, so what would replace isomodology for high rank? Gauge theory gives you an answer to this question because uh, there is a natural upgrade of these partition functions when you uh, in introduce higher times in the, uh, uh, in the Lagrangian of the original theory. So you introduce high Casimirs. So there is a formal power series in additional variables, which is tempting to identify with, with, with W moduli. Uh, for the Z function, and we can study its, uh, again, limits uh, when epsilon one or epsilon two go to zero. Uh, when both epsilon one and epsilon two go to zero for, for the A1 type theory, um, Andrei Marshakov and I studied it a long time ago. Uh, and the answer was not surprisingly one of the rhythm hierarchies uh, uh, introduced by uh, Igor Krichever, but uh, to, so that we did it for the asymptotically free case when, when there was no matter. To do this with the matter fields uh, requires some more, I think, sophistication, but in principle, it, it is possible. So, so there is an answer to this question hidden in, in, in this formula, just the question is how to extract this answer. Now, uh, if you recall this picture of, uh, you know, some manifold with overlapping uh, coordinate charts. So, so far, what I, what I talked about, the Garnier system and, and isomorphic formations, they seem to be, so they are, these are natural things to study in the context of Hitchin system. So for, if you replace the sphere with punctures by, gen, by the high genus human surface, if you replace SL2 by, you know, simple E group, uh, there is a whole machinery associated to that. So you can study the uh, hygienous KZ equation. You can study the uh, equalization of Hitchin system. The, there is a variety of operas which uh, captures the spectrum of the of Hitchin Hamiltonians uh, due to Bennett and Dinfeld. And there is some meaning to all of this things in the, in the context of gauge theories, which I, which I described. But if you go from one patch to another patch, instead of the Hitchin system, you would be dealing with, with, with other hyperkeller manifolds, which are also algebraic integral systems, but they're not Hitchin systems. So the quiver theories, for example, if the quiver theories of ADE type would correspond to the modulus places of ADE instantons on R2 cross T2 or ADE monopoles on R2 cross S1. Uh, 
So it is not known uh, what is the analog of the variety of operas for, for these happy color manifolds. Uh, of course, for the A type, there is num transform, which allows you to map the um, instantons on R2 cross T2 or monopoles on R2 cross S1 to, uh, to a kind of a Hitchin system on the punctured cylinder or a torus. But in general, there's no such dog. And for, for the theories which correspond to Calabi-Yaus, again, we have, we have some ingredients, we have some integral systems, uh, and we have some Hapekeller geometry, which is associated to, to the, this to toric calabi uh, whose origin is easy to understand using string theory arguments, using T-duality along the calabi torus. But um, again, we don't know what this uh, surface defects uh, and so what, what would be the analog of the variety of uh, operas which correspond to surface defects and, and other uh, ingredients which I discussed like KZ equation. Uh, so that's something which, which I think is very interesting to explore in the future. Thank you for attention. I'm sorry for running over time. Thank you. So well, much, not much running over time, except for this technical break. So, well, everybody was probably already very tired, but still maybe some short questions or comments. Uh, Nikita, I have a maybe very loosely defined question. Uh, there is a generalization of Hitchin system when you replace uh, Higgs fields by connection in additional S1 direction. So it becomes three-dimensional theory. Uh, do you see how it yes. is? Yes, so, so that's, that's um, uh, so if you study monopoles um, on, so, okay, what I see is the particular case of what you just said, namely, I, if I study monopoles on R2 cross S1, yes. so for some gauge group G, so monopause means we saw we're solving Bogomolin equation. Yes. So the Bogomolin equation implies that uh, the holonomy along S1 of the gauge field plus I times the, the Higgs field is actually covariantly holomorphic. Um, in in the, so if if I if I if I identify R two with C with coordinate X then then yeah. uh, so this is holomorphic in, in the X dimension X direction and so you can define the curve therefore which is the family of the conjugacy classes of this the complexified holonomy of over C. Uh, but the problem is that in general it would be of infinite genus. Because right. the monogamy is in time with algebraic function, but still it can work. But 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 the things which which so but what um, uh, but that's the whole point of uh, of the story of Kiku characters and so on. So uh, what you get from the from the four-dimensional gauge theory corresponding to the quiver of the AD type. So that will produce the finite genus. Mm -hmm. Spectral curve. And uh, if it's a, a fine quiver, then it's, we study, so, the, so it's a, another generalization of the, so, so here we, we replace the Higgs field by the connection in By the complex mm -hmm. connection in, in S1, but we can also replace the Higgs field by, uh, by connection along the two torus. So another generalization. Yeah. 
And that's what you get from this, for this affine type theories. So we get instantons, G instantons on R2 cross T2. So the genus of this curve, as you know, it, it's related to the rank of the, uh, of the gauge group. If you start from the generic monopole configuration, which is which would correspond to the infinite genus spectral curve, then uh, you can I can I would speculate that that would correspond to some kind of infinite rank gauge group on the left hand side, which maybe could be a higher dimensional gauge theory, so a theory which comes from six dimensions or five dimensions, but that that's that's a pure speculation. So uh, I don't know, well, or it could be that this is infinite genus, but um, is this, okay. Uh, if it's a the infinite genus of this type, when actually, you know, if I normalize, no. the, the normalization oh, would be a finite genus, then- What, uh, I, mean, it, what I mean, the, even for KDV case, for yeah. generic periodic potential, the spectral curve is of infinite genus, but right. the space of all periodic potential is approximated by finite gap for which this spectral curve of infinite genus admits normalization of finite genus. So you just I can see, approximate okay. by finite genus. Right, so, so that would mean that you approximate Whatever, so so there is some theory maybe. Okay, so maybe it, it's not. Should approximate but, by a finite gauge group. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, but it's not. I, I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't know what. what uh, I don't know what what to say in general. So this infinite genus curve. Should I view it as a formal object or is it? Uh, I mean, the parameters of the curve are the formal parameters or the or they are no again uh, as an analogy for KDV, it's it's not formal. You see, its branch points are just spectral spectrum right. of periodic and anti-periodic pro problem, and because they uh, decrease exponentially, the cuts decrease exponentially. You can make sense of infinite genus curve. In a precise way, you can introduce holomorphic differentials, Riemann Roth, and such. That was done by Martin and Trubis, Trubovitz ages ago. So, yes, also, yes. But the, the question is so the period, so this is a curve with some, again, with some differential, presumably, right? So, so, yes. we, so the periods of the differential uh, around the cuts, which, uh, which around the you know, cycles, which exponentially disappear uh, they become they have some... smaller and smaller yeah smaller so and smaller it's, so... it's, a, it's kind of convergence picture of, of yes this. but if so so if i identify those periods as, as in zabi theory with masses of some particles it, it means that you're you're dealing with a kind of a theory which has a infinite set of bps particles potentially maybe okay maybe a, they're not actually realized as particles, but could yeah. have particles of exponentially small mass, which is interesting uh, in a completely different setup when people now, this is, I mean, this is the Waffa's uh, landscape realm when he uh, tries to argue that there are some constraints on quantum field theories, which are, uh, which follow from the fact that you can couple this theory to gravity. And for some reason they do discuss the, uh, towers of particles which with exponentially small masses uh, and uh, they have some famous conjectures about it. So, so it might be actually interesting in, in, in this completely unexpected context. Okay, thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Any more questions from those who survived? <laughs> Okay, so let's then thank the speaker. Thanks all to the speakers and participants, and hopefully we meet tomorrow.